Writing declarative code can make your application easier to understand, less infuriating to write, and less prone to bugs. So I recently published a video on what coding declaratively or reactively actually means. So I'll link to that in the description if you need more detail there. But one of the key aspects is that we generally want state in our application to work like this. If we have some state B that is derived from some other state A, when A is updated, we want B to react to that by also updating. So RxJS can help us do this, but so can SolidJS's signals and Svelte stores and reactive declarations. And at a basic level, creating derived state with all three of these options looks pretty similar. But then RxJS has all of this nonsense. There's over 100 operators that help compose and modify streams with a variety of wacky and confusing names. So it's very common to hear that RxJS is overly complex and only really required if you're dealing with things like WebSockets, high frequency trading apps, or Daedric Princes trying to gain influence in Tamriel. So in this video, I intend to make the point that the necessity for RxJS becomes apparent in much more mundane everyday situations if you're trying to create a declarative code base. So one such common situation is the humble search box. So just a quick disclaimer, uh, I'm going to use Svelte as the bad example here, but please don't interpret this as me saying that Svelte or Solid are bad. Uh, the fact that they address reactivity front and center is why I am even using these as examples. I think both of these tools are amazing, I intend to use them, and their creators know infinitely more about reactivity than I do. I'm just making the point that the built-in reactivity solution is not enough to handle the issues that RxJS handles. I'm making the case for incorporating RxJS into your Svelte applications or otherwise adding in something to do what RxJS does. Okay, so here's the problem. I have a basic search input filter here and as I type, it is going to query some API for results that match the search term. So if I type J, I'm going to get all of these results. Then JO will give me just the ones that match that term and so on. So the API will respond with the results with a random delay of anywhere between 50 milliseconds and two seconds. And that is the problem. Just as there will be response time variance in a real server, the request can take different amounts of time to complete. And that means that whilst I might try to fetch data from the API for J and then JO, I might actually get the results for J O first and then J second. So I'll actually be left seeing the results for J even though I'm searching for J-O. So if I just clear the console logs out here and I just type in my entire search term quickly, you can see that these results are being returned out of order. Although luckily in this case, the final request to complete was actually the search term I wanted. But this was just pure chance. Any one of these could have finished first. If we try this again, we'll probably see on the second time that I'm not so lucky. And in this case, indeed, the last request to complete was JOS. So I actually get Josh and Joseph as results, even though I'm searching for Josh. So let's see what is actually going on here in diagram form. And this will bring us to what the killer feature of RxJS is, and that is having a way to explicitly handle asynchronous reactivity. So to put it simply, we can think of synchronous reactivity as being where if B depends on A, when A updates, B can instantly be updated. Uh, perhaps B can be calculated by performing a synchronous operation like filtering an array. Asynchronous reactivity occurs where when A updates, some amount of time will have to pass before B can be updated. And this is what is happening in our search case. We need to wait for the API to respond with the result before B can be set. So let's say our search term changes to J. Our search results is derived from the search term, so it will instantly react. It will take that search term and launch an asynchronous request to fetch the data. And once it gets that data, the search results will be set. So this works fine if everything is settled before we enter in our next keystroke. But let's say that the fetch has not finished yet and search term changes again to JO. Again, our search results will instantly react by launching an async request to fetch the data. And now we have two requests pending. So what will that value of our search results be? Both of these requests will update the value of search results when they resolve. So whichever request finishes second will win. So we have a race condition, one of the most infamous bug causes. So whether our application works or not is now left up to luck. So now let's look at the RxJS implementation in Svelte. It looks quite similar. I am just using a subject instead of Svelte's own stores. 
So the key difference here is that I'm using one of those 100 or so RxJS operators. In this case, I'm using a switch map. So this provides me with an explicit way to say that if a new search term arrives and a previous search term is still being fetched, to cancel the previous request and just use the new request instead. So you'll be able to see over on the right here, if I type in my request, I'm only getting that single request for Josh running because all of the previous ones were canceled because they never completed before those new values came in. So in diagram form, that looks like this. Same situation as before. We have already had the search term change once and we have a request in progress to fetch the result from the API. Now, when search term changes again, the in progress request is canceled and we just have one request for the latest search term data. So this is the specific behavior I want in this case, but RxJS has a myriad of different operators to handle all sorts of situations. So again, I'm not trying to bash anything here or say that you have to use RxJS. This video is more of a rebuttal to the idea that RxJS is overcomplicated. I don't think it's overcomplicated. I think it gives you the tools necessary to deal with complex issues in applications that still exist, whether you handle them or not. If you want to code declaratively, then you are going to need RxJS or you are going to need something else that does the same things that RxJS does. Okay, that's it for this one. Uh, if you found this interesting, a like or subscribe before you go would be very much appreciated. And I hope to see you here again for the next video.